long gone are the days of RLCS dynasties where one team would dominate the world for years. In the modern era, it feels like we're lucky to see a team stick together for one year, let alone be consistent winners for that entire time. Go back just one year to the top teams in each region and the majority of those teams have either fallen off or their rosters are completely unrecognizable. Aside from the rare examples like G2, almost every team has a completely different identity compared to the rosters of last season, including the team that this video is about. After a quarterfinal finish at Worlds, Carmen Corp dropped Astral and Nolly in favor of Vatira and Exotic for the 22-23 season, and they immediately started farming the RLCS right when it started. They've come first or second in every tournament so far this season except for the Fall Major, and as we recently saw, they convincingly won the Winter Major. It's the longest winning streak that any roster has had since RLCS X. Is this version of K-Corp going to be the first true mainstays of the modern era, akin to the Dignitas and Gale Force of years past? Will they break the trend of recent top teens and stay the tournament gatekeepers for a whole season or longer? Well, I can't tell you if they're going to stick together or not because teams in Europe will just make a change out of nowhere, even if they're doing well. But I can give you some insight into just how good this team is and why I think they will be the first dynasty in the modern era of RLCS. Before we dive in, I'd like to clear up the question, is Carmen Corp a defensive team? Are they sitting back and counterattacking their opponents for easy goals? No. In fact, Johnny Boy spent an hour and a half proving that they aren't. In the last three series that K-Corp played at the San Diego Major, only 18% of their 49 goals were counterattacks. I'm also going to show some heat maps this video, and you'll see that in almost every game, Carmen Corp is more in the offensive half of the field than their opponent. I'm not going to do two T. Bates' wrong videos in a row, but he is absolutely not correct in this take, and you'll see more of why that is as the video goes on. As always, let's start with the playstyle graphs. If you're new to the channel, these are created with a machine learning model that I wrote that's trained on RLCS stats. Each name on the edge of the graph represents a playstyle that the algorithm found. The closer to the average of that style the player is, the closer the point will be to the edge of the graph. The playstyles go from most offensive to most offensive starting from 12 o'clock and going clockwise. The shape of each player gives you a pretty good idea of their tendencies over a period of multiple games, and all of them together tell the story of how the team played together. More information is available in the description. Starting from a zoomed out view, this is how Carmen Corp has averaged out over the 22-23 season from the fall split to the end of the winter split. As a surprise to almost nobody, K Corp is heavily represented in the three most aggressive playstyles, and the two that mostly manifest behind the midfield line are less represented. This is because they play with an offensive system called Cover 2, where the goal is specifically to box in their opponent at the midfield line and slowly close the box and move that line forward as they squeeze the boost and momentum out of the defending team. Hard clears are usually ineffective against this system, and the offense often has a lot of available infield passing options. This is opposed to the other popular rotation system that I refer to as Stacked, where the team on offense will go for a series of solo plays, 50-50s, and follow-ups in an attempt to create space and force mistakes out of their opponent. I recently did an in-depth video about this if you're interested to learn more. If the rotations are swinging really wide and the defending team is hitting a lot of hard clears, this system can definitely look defensive, but it is quite the opposite. Another reason someone might confuse K-Corp's rotation with a defensive sit-back style is because of how much they utilize upfield passing, which is often only used in defensive to offensive transitions by most teams and therefore counterattacks. Carmen Corp, however, uses it any opportunity that they get. And it makes sense. The speed and unpredictability of a cherry pick shot from the defensive third is a nightmare for that defending team. They're careful to not overextend on their offense, so if a clear goes to the player furthest back in KC's rotation, it's a safe bet that the ball is going to come back at the net fast. Crummy Corp is at the forefront of the offensive meta right now. Other teams are running the same general offensive system at a high level, but nobody is able to do it quite like they do. I mean, they played all of the best teams in San Diego and nobody looked threatening against them for more than a game or two. G2, Liquid, and FaZe all run their own version of a cover 2 offense, and none of them came close to winning their series against K Corp. And that's not to say that teams who run stacked are somehow lesser, because that system can be very effective against cover 2, just not against Carmen Corp. They have a way of adapting to other teams series to series and even game to game where it is incredibly difficult for anybody to get a leg up on them. 
they build their blue wall at the midfield and only the best teams have a chance at breaking it down. Patira is normally the most offensive player, but in this tournament he was technically also the most defensive with the most saves and a lot of time spent in the defensive half. This is easily explained by the playstyle graph. Patira is usually the first player in the rotation, and that goes both ways. Because he has such wide rotations, he's often the one in position to defend the net when the ball comes that way, and he's so effective at clearing the ball upfield to a teammate that the other two are usually not needed to defend the goal line. When looking at KC's performance series by series, Vatira's style remains a constant while Itachi and Exotic make adjustments as needed. Carmen Corp started the tournament out red hot by sweeping nearly every team in their group. Dignitas, Falcons, and Vitality were all dispatched with ease, but the way that KC handled each team was different. Dignitas's offense, aside from a few solid plays, was unable to shake KC defense. K-Corp were able to run their preferred system unhindered while Dignitas was playing reactively, and that reflects on the heat maps for the series. You can see very defined lines and regions where Carmen Court players rotated around while Dignitas were mostly trapped in defense. Their playstyle graphs show all of KC playing offensive roles while Itachi covered the midfield positions. Vatira covered the first man role, also getting the majority of the saves. Dignitas are shown on their heels, struggling to defend against Carmen Corp's attacks. They were able to get a couple of good looks in though. Carmen Corp's near post shadow defense is weak, especially when their opponent plays fast high in the air, and Dignitas got two counterattacks that way. Both times, Vatira was awkward on the wall and was not able to react to the quick shots. Unfortunately for Dignitas, they weren't able to create enough of those opportunities to take a game. In round 2 of Group B, Carmen Corp had to make a hard pivot to face one of the most aggressive teams in the tournament, Team Falcons. Normally, Game 1s are slow with K-Corp, but both teams came running out of the gate for this one. In a stark contrast from the previous series, Carmen Corp was forced to move back their defensive line and spread out their rotations. It's in this series where we get to see their full defensive catalog. When on the offensive to defensive transition, Carmen Corp spreads out and moves back to the net and aligns straight down the middle of the field, or as close as they can get to one. So they're able to cover the entire pitch. The player furthest back focuses on clearing the ball from the backboard to an awaiting midfield player, while the other attempts a demo on the second or third man in the opponent's offensive transition. This all ensures that the ball stays away from their goal line and the opponent is unable to get a solid foothold in their offensive rotation because it's immediately disrupted, allowing Carmen Corp to reassume possession of the ball and remove pressure from their defense. In later series, they repeat this movement so often that you can actually see it in the heat maps. KC turned their offense on full blast in game 2, choking out the Falcons in their defensive third with perfect cover to offense and waiting for the perfect time to score. Falcons held strong for all of regulation time, but Fatira was able to end the game with a solo play right after the overtime kickoff. Two games up and on match point, Carmen Court made the decision to play with their normal offense with a deep rotation in game 3. Despite Falcons' best efforts, they were only able to get one goal while Carmen Corp did just enough to walk away with two goals and the series win. In round three of the group, Carmen Corp finally met the first team who would take a game off of them, Vitality. Game one was a tactical mess for both teams since they were both playing as aggressively as possible to posture and to get that important game one win. In the chaos, Vitality was able to expose those defensive weaknesses from Carmen Corp. Even though they put on a lot of good pressure, both of their goals were ultimately the result of poor rotations from Carmen Corp and otherwise defensible positions. The following game was the first showing of K Corp's bounce back mechanic, as I like to call it, but right after a loss, they completely dominate their opponent in the next game. Seriously, this happens three more times just in this tournament, where K-Corp will lose one or two games, then explode off of the line and demolish the other team to start a wave of momentum in their favor. The mental fortitude that they have as a team that allows them to bounce back like that, above all, is what will cement them as a long-lasting winning team. Looking at the playstyle graph, Itachi broke out of his midfield norms and ended up getting a lot more goals and saves than normal, while Exotic took the more passive position. This doesn't happen for the rest of the tournament, but that is the adjustment that Carmen Corp chose to make to beat Vitality, and it worked. 
Vitality's graph shows just how defensively they had to play in order to keep the games against KC close. Of all the teams to play against Carmine Corp in San Diego, G2 looked like the most even series to me. Throughout all six games, possession and pressure between both teams were close to even, and there were no big blowout games. The highest goal differential was 3, and the average score differential for the series was 0.67 goals in favor of Carmine Corp. That is the lowest average score differential for Carmine Corp in the whole tournament, and the only differential below one goal. For the first time this tournament, K Corp's opponent made an effective adjustment, and they were forced to adapt in order to win the series. Game 1 was a comfortable win, but K Corp were forced by G2 to play on their heels in Game 2. G2 started the series out in a stacked offensive system, but were in the process of transitioning to cover 2. Carmen Corp barely squeaked out the win in the final seconds of the game with an upfield passing play. This is the game where KC's defensive movements really show up on the heat maps. Batir and Itachi can both be seen taking multiple balls across the goal from backboard and clearing to a midfield exotic. Game 3 was all G2 for possession and pressure, and it looked like a team may finally take down Carmen Corp. They were playing a good cover 2 offense and passing high in the air, taking advantage of KC's weaknesses that had been exposed before. K Corp tried switching to a stacked offense to counter, but G2's defense was equal to it. Carmen Corp, as usual, came out firing after a game loss, scoring 4 goals on G2 in the first 2 minutes and change. By substantially increasing the pressure on G2 and utilizing more passing with a stacked offense, they forced G2 to play outside of their comfort zone and capitalized on defensive errors with some solo play heroics sprinkled in. Unlike the other teams that KC faced in this tournament though, G2 did not allow another goal to go in despite continued pressure, and they were able to swing momentum back into their favor for Game 5. Carmen Corp amped up the pressure even more for Game 5, but despite them holding on to possession for the longest amount of time so far in the series, G2 caught them overextending three times that game with a very spread out rotation and picked up another win. Now, Carmen Corp was forced to make yet another adjustment. That adjustment was... Have Atira score 2 goals in 40 seconds and then don't let G2 score. Not in a sit back and counter attack kind of way either. K Corp were playing aggressively and in G2's face all game, but they were making sure to cover their defense better than they had in the previous game. You can see in Casey's playstyle graph how the stack play is represented. Exotic is the striker, Vatira the next in rotation, and Itachi the anchor. G2 played out of their norm this tournament. Usually, all of them play very similarly to each other, but you can see on their graph that JNAPs mostly stayed back while Chicago took the majority of the shots. Atomic style was so out of the norm that it didn't strongly register in any defined category here. The Carmen Court vs. Liquid series. What a back and forth, and what a defensive mess. Outside of Carmen Corp's two blowout wins, both teams were fighting for midfield control, and after they had that, the net was basically free. Both of them rely on the same shadow defense from the near post, and they are very vulnerable to basic infield passing, good solo plays, and dunks on the player clearing the ball since there's often nobody there to follow up. Normally, their defensive holes aren't exploited so consistently and obviously, but my notes for this series are filled with mentions of bad defense, near post rotations, and free goals. And not to mention the kickoff goals against Liquid. This was the highest average goal differential for Carmen Corp in the entire tournament at 2 goals per game. Team Liquid started out game 1 with a hybrid of stacked and cover 2 offense, but they quickly switched to a full cover 2 and stuck with it for the series. The graph show Oski playing the offensive role while Akronik and Atto played identically, mostly favoring the defensive side of the field. K Corp, on the other hand, show a more cohesive cover 2 where every player favors first man or striker the most. It's easy to see why they registered so offensively when the team scored a combined 23 goals over 6 games. Both teams played a lot more subdued in games 4 and 5, with Team Liquid taking both of those by one goal after scoring first. Scoring the first goal is extremely important to most teams' success, but especially K Corp's. Out of the 28 games they played at the Major, Carmine Corp scored first in 19 of them, and out of those games they won 17. They did not score first in 9 of their games, and they won only 4 of those. Team Liquid, their opponent, won every single game in this tournament where they scored first, and only won 3 out of 11 where they did not. They did not do as well as K Corp in scoring the first goal, only doing it in 12 out of 23 games. 
Getting the first skull of the game is a key part of K Corp's playstyle, and it's something that they are very good at. Out of every other team at the Major, only Gen G rivals their 2 to 1 rate of scoring the first goal. The rest of the teams are at around 1 to 1 at best. When a team has to play from behind against K Corp's rotation, which is very efficient at capturing long clears and sending the ball right back upfield into offense, they're forced to extend themselves to get a chance at tying the game with a goal of their own, leaving themselves vulnerable. That is why K Corp wins tend to either be close games or blowouts with not so much in between. Once a team becomes flustered fighting against Carmen Corp's relentless offense, the series is over. That's why, especially toward the end of the series, Vatira will start out the game immediately firing solo attacks after the kickoff. If he can score those and demoralize the opponent, Carmen Corp wins. And that brings us to the final match. Carmen Corp vs FaZe Clan. Both teams play a very similar playstyle and dominate their respective regions, but KC has better offense and FaZe has better defense in my opinion. With that in mind, I knew that this would be a very interesting series to watch, and it was a treat that we finally got both one seeds in the finals of a major. The playstyle data shows just how lopsided this series was for pressure, with Carmen Corp holding the majority of it. FaZe actually had more saves per game as a team than shots, and they spent a much higher amount of time in defense than K-Corp did. First Killer and Mist both had significant presence around both ends of the field, landing them in heavy first man territory. Because of the presence on defense, Mist was also placed the highest out of his team in every other role. Sipical was stationed around the defensive midfield more than his teammates in most games, so the only role that he registered in much was anchor. Carmen Corp was super aggressive all series, and the whole team scored the highest in the two most offensive categories as a result. Even the games that they lost, they were more aggressive in upfield than FaZe were, according to the game by game positioning stats. Despite KC's domination on offense, every single game in this series was decided by who scored first. After the first goal was scored, the team on the receiving end never took the lead back. Tied the game a few times, but never got the extra goal to come out on top. I thought that this series had potential to make it all the way to game 7, but it ended with an unfortunate touch on defense from First Killer with all of the pressure of K Corp's immense offense on him. With that, Carmen Corp won their first major of the season with no question that they're the best team in the world right now. Hopefully that rundown gives you a good idea of how Carmen Corp plays and why they are so dominant. Their versatility on offense is unmatched, and the way that they can constantly adapt to beat any challenge is kryptonite to most teams. They do really well to score first and win the first game in a series, putting them in an instant advantage over everybody who goes up against them. And on top of that, the players are just really good. Exotic, Itachi, and especially Vatira are all world class players. Above all, the strategy and mechanical skill, they just want it more than every other team right now. Even when they go down a goal at the start of a game, they're one of the best at mounting a comeback, still winning nearly half of those games. Most teams at the Major had one or two comebacks at best. They do have a couple of weaknesses that I talked about. They don't defend high air offense very well, and their defensive rotations when continued pressure is applied to them are easily exploitable. That's a common problem among a lot of teams these days though, and the conversation about the prevalence of shadow defense from the near post wall and clustering up on the defensive corner is a topic for another day. Carmen Corp are not the only ones. They're so good anyway that only the top echelon of teams in the world are able to expose that. Any team outside of the top 8 won't even be able to try exploiting K Corp's weakness on defense. So, do I think that this iteration of Carmen Corp is going to stay at the top of Rocket League Esports for the foreseeable future? Yeah, I think they stand just as good of a chance as any long-standing team of sticking around. Do I think that they'll become the first real dynasty of the modern era of RLCS? It's impossible to say for sure with how volatile the esport is, but I think they can do it. They have a better chance than any other team that's tried so far. The blue wall has cemented itself at the top of the world, and it's going to take a meteoric force to break it down. Three six five, no breaks, no time. They stoop in my head for the hours spent. Four eight zero to the five zero one. My family they struggled, they couldn't pay rent. Yeah, my thoughts never left that tent. We was broke, no sense, and the tears flowed down.